Okay, so on one hand, we have this AI coordinators like Windsurf and Cursor or Tray AI. And on the other hand, we have the OG and old VS Code or Visual Studio Code. And in fact, all these AI coordinators like Windsurf and Cursor or Tray AI is actually built on top of Visual Studio Code, or basically you could say it is a VS Code fork. But the OG VS Code or the original VS Code does not really come with any kind of AI capabilities right out of the box. But the good news is that you can use extensions to extend the functionality of VS Code. And just by installing an extension called Klein, you can add a autonomous coding AI agent to your VS Code interface and you can start using it and start or introduce AI coding abilities to VS Code. And you can use pretty much any LLM of choice from Anthropic like Cloud 3.5 Sonnet or DeepSea or Quen or Gemini or whatever you want to. So today in this video, I will show you how you can set up and use Klein on VS Code to introduce all that AI superpower and AI agent kind of stuff to VS Code. And if that sounds interesting, without wasting any further ado, let's jump straight in. All right, so this right here is the official website of Klein. And previously, Klein was known as Cloud Dev. And the first thing that you gotta do is to click the first link in the description below and head over to Klein.bot. And this right here is the official website. And you should be able to find all the details related to Klein, like what it can do, how to use the same, what are the features and capabilities it has, and all other features. And as I mentioned earlier, Klein is basically an extension or a plugin that you could install inside of VS Code. So obviously to use Klein, you will need VS Code. And if you haven't already downloaded VS Code, you can just head over to the second link in the description below or click code.visualstudio.com and download and install VS Code. So once you have VS Code installed, you can then go ahead and install Klein. So if I click on this install Klein button right here, it will take me to the marketplace page of Visual Studio Code where I can view the entire details of client, the version, number of installs, ratings and all that details. Okay, so if you want to, you can go ahead and read all the features it has to offer. And as I mentioned earlier, you can use pretty much any API and AI models or LLMs from, you know, providers like Open Router, Anthropic, OpenAI, Gemini, Azure, GCP and a lot more. And now client is able to run commands in terminal. It can create and edit files. It can use the browser all thanks to the computer use feature from Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. So these are all some of the features that client has to offer. And recently with the latest version, they've also introduced some MCP plugins that you can use within client as well. So if you want to find more details about the same, you can just head over to client.bot slash MCP marketplace and you should be able to find all these MCP plugins that you could use within Klein as well. And now let me just go ahead and open VS Code and here I have VS Code, okay? So the OG VS Code. And to add Klein to VS Code, all you gotta do is to click on this extensions icon right here and you can go ahead and search for Klein. So I'll search Klein and this right here is Klein. So it says autonomous coding agent. So I'll go ahead and click on that one. And now to install the same onto VS Code, all you gotta do is to click this install button and click on trust publisher and install and within seconds client will get installed to vs code and after the installation is done you should be able to find this client icon or logo towards this uh, sidebar right here so i'll go ahead and click that okay and now if this is your first time the first thing that you gotta do is to obviously select the llm provider that you want to use so you have a couple of options so if you go ahead and click on this api provider option right here you'll be able to find all these options that you have so you have open router anthropic OpenAI compatible, then we have Google Gemini, DeepSeek, Mistral. Okay, so all of these are options you have. So for example, if you let's say want to use some of these models from Open Router, you can head over to Open Router. Oops. And you can go ahead and browse through all these models and you can grab the API key and maybe top up and start using it within let's say uh client. And now in this context, let's say I want to use Cloud 3.5 Sonnet via the official API from Anthropic. So I can go ahead and select Anthropic. And now all I gotta do is to enter the Anthropic API key. So let me quickly go ahead and grab that. So here I have opened my Anthropic console and I'll go ahead and click on this create key option. Put Let's put a random name, let's say client, click on add. And now I'll go ahead and copy the API key. And now for, just for demonstration purpose, I'm actually using uh, Cloud 3.5 Sonnet or the uh, Anthropic API key but you're free to choose whatever API or LLM model that you want. And again, Anthropic API and using Cloud 3.5 on it is actually kind of expensive. So it would be better if you use, let's say, a relatively more uh, affordable one, like uh, from, you can go ahead and use uh, DeepSeek or maybe let's say um, something from LM Studio or Olama. So whatever it is, if you want to use a uh, Cloud 3.5 Sonnet via Anthropic, you can go ahead and use that. And now after I put my API key, all I gotta do is to click on this let's go option. And now that's pretty much all I gotta do. So client is fully set up and I can go ahead and start creating applications or web applications using AI. And first up, let me just go ahead and open a folder in VS Code. So I've already created one, client sample. So I'll go ahead and wait a second. 
and we drag it and drop it in here so i have opened a client sample folder in here next up let's just say i want to create a next.js based project so i'll go ahead and install next.js first so i can open the terminal and next up let me just go ahead and search for next.js and copy the installation command heading back and i'll go ahead and paste and hit enter okay maybe i can also put dot slash and again if you don't know how to install next.js or do any of these stuff you can go ahead and ask client the same and client should do it for example you can head over to client and ask initialize and install let's say a uh, next.js project and it will give you all the commands and prompts that you have to run to get it set up so let me just wait for all the dependencies to install and once done we can go ahead and start developing our application using client all right so next.js is now successfully installed and if i go ahead and run npm run dev and hit enter it should start the next.js development server and i should be able to access the same by visiting this uh, localhost url that is localhost 3000 all right so here we have the boilerplate page of next.js and next up let's just go ahead and try to build some application okay let's say i want to build a simple calculator app so i could go ahead and say i have already installed next.js with typescript and now i want to create a simple calculator app with modern styling similar to that of let's say ios and i can go ahead and hit enter and let's see just for demonstration purpose i'm creating a simple calculator app but you're free to create whatever sort of application that you want to so you can go ahead and give the you know prompt and start doing it and again another cool thing about client is that it shows you the actual api cost every time you make a request and the uh, ai writes the code so how many costs it incurred the ai will show you it in here the client will show you it in here so as you can see the api cost is 0 0.0897 dollars all right so it says client wants to read this file auto approve okay maybe i'll enable auto approve for now and i can click on approve and let's wait okay so the context window for now is 200,000 tokens and all the details and as you can see it says client wants to read this file click on approve okay i guess maybe i'll okay now the client wants to execute this command so i can click on run command option and now client will open a new terminal instance and run the particular command okay that's great and maybe i'll just have to enable this option okay i'll auto approve everything i guess uh use the browser mcp okay basically i went ahead and gave full permission to client and what next okay so as you can see so far the api cost is already 0.14 dollars so anthropic api is definitely expensive so if you want to use that you can use that but otherwise you can go ahead and try deep seek or any other you know simple and affordable api and you should be pretty much good to go okay and if you want to you can also go ahead and host these open source AI models locally within your uh, machine let's say DeepSeek the digital version of DeepSeek or any other LLM via LM Studio or Olama and then you can use it within client as well but for that you will need some powerful GPU and CPU so if you have the resources you can go ahead and try that as well okay so let's just wait for it to complete and after that we'll take it up from there all right so this is what the AI has created and it is a simple calculator app styled similar to the one that we get in iOS or iPhones but the aspect ratio and all that kind of stuff kind of seems messed up so i'll go ahead and let's say oops i'll go ahead and say can you please fix the sizing of the calculator right now it looks like shrinked from both side and i can hit enter and now it will make a fresh api request and then make all the changes and we write the code so as you can see it is actually making all these changes and it will automatically okay so it is now adjusting all that bit parameters and all that within tailwind css and once that's done you should be able to see a preview so as you can see this looks better so i just went ahead and asked the ai to create a calculator app styled similar to the one that we get in ios and as you can see the color scheme and all that this orange buttons and all that kind of stuff looks pretty similar so this is i mean the whole point of this video is to just let you guys know or show how to use client and the what are the functionalities that you have and how to basically set up and use it not exactly the app that you're building i know this is just a basic and simple calculator app for that matter and now let me cancel this one and let's say you want to try a different ai model so you could go ahead and click on this option right here 
So if you click on this one, you will be able to find a drop down menu called model. And if you click on that one, you should be able to find all these AI models that you could access from Anthropic. So in this case, we have 3.5 Sonnet, Haiku, Opus and Haiku. Okay, a latest one. And again, you can also find the cost associated with it as well. For example, the max output is 8K. We have input prices like uh, $3 for million tokens and cash write price is 3.75, cash read price is 0 0.30 and output price is like $15 per million tokens. Oof. This is like significantly expensive when compared with like what DeepSeek. So if you want an affordable and really dirt cheap one, I'll suggest you use DeepSeek. And now if you click on this add the right button right here, you will be able to add additional files or things to the context of the AI. For example, here we can add a folder, file, git commits, terminal problems or even paste URL to fetch content. And again, if you click on this one right here, so this camera icon, you'll be able to attach images to the AI. And here we have two options or two tabs. One is plan and the other one is act. So in the plan mode, it, the client will gather information or architect a plan. So you could go ahead and discuss what's whatever thing that you want to develop, what is the best approach and all that kind of stuff with the AI. And if you click on this act option, the AI will implement all these things that we have or you have discussed with the AI. So that is if you want to plan and if you want to chat or gather information about what exactly you're building and what is the best approach and all that, you can put it into the plan mode. And once you're ready and if you want to start building the application, you can put it into the act mode. And similarly, you can also go ahead and click on this settings icon right here to find additional settings. So here we have all that, okay, option to change the API provider. For example, if I go ahead and let's say select Google Gemini, I should be able to select all these models from Gemini, including 2.0, 1.5 models. So if I want to, I can put the API key and start using the same. For now, I'll put it as Anthropic. And if I want to, I can also view the advanced settings in here. So if you want to, you can go ahead and further modify and change all these settings in here. And again, with the recent addition of client, they also introduce the support for MCP servers as well. So for example, if you click on this icon right here in the client tab, you'll be able to find all these MCP servers within the marketplace. So here we have Sleep, SendGrid, Firecrawl, then we have Proximox Manager, Sentry, Airtable and all that. For example, let's say if I click on this Airtable one, okay, so it will open up the MCP server page. And as you can see, it says Airtable model context protocol server for allowing AI systems to interact with your Airtable bases. So basically what it does is that you can go ahead and install and try all these MCP server to as a plugin, you can add this to client and start interacting with this and you can build something. So let's say if you are implementing some email sending functionalities such that in your app, you can go ahead and start using the SendGrid. So if you're using SendGrid for sending the emails and all that kind of stuff, you can select the SendGrid, install it. And now the AI can interact with the MCP server and, you know, build stuff related to SendGrid. So basically, if I go ahead and install the SendGrid MCP server within client, now client will be able to go ahead and directly interact with SendGrid and implement auto functionality that I want to in my application. So that's how this whole MCP server thing works. I'll make sure to create a dedicated video explaining everything about MCP servers and how you can configure the same within client and use the same within VS Code as well. So if you want to make sure subscribed and stay tuned for that one so that's basically how you use client to introduce AI coding capabilities to visual studio code and you can go ahead and start using this and start using whichever AI model that you want to and build your application so this is basically exactly similar to what github copilot offers so yeah it's almost similar as what I would say and again if you want to you can go ahead and click the first link in the description below and check out client and install and add it to vs code and start using the same and again, as client gives you the option to select whichever AI model that you want to use or LLM provider, you're free to choose whatever that you want to and start using the same. So that's pretty much all I wanted to show you in this video. So if you want to add AI capabilities to VS Code, client is the way to go. You can also go ahead and try GitHub Copilot if you want to. So yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you in this video. I hope you guys found this video useful. If yes, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.